In this video, we're going to look at line graphs and especially interpreting them to see the absolute change and the percent change. So first, just to get kind of acclimated to these two line graphs. So I have this one is showing new residential home sales in thousands of units from April 2015 to April 2020. Um, for comparison purposes, I have another line graph uh, from a different source, but this one is showing existing home sales um, in thousands of units. And again, starting in 2015, um, going through to 2020, and also uh, measured in thousands of units. And so I have a few questions here we can think about. So when did the peak of new home sales occur for on, from 2016 to 2020? So considering the span that's on these graphs, and about how many new homes were sold. So we want to go up to this graph and we just kind of want to track along this graph until we see the highest that it gets. So it looks like pretty much that is going to be right here. So again, it's kind of tough to estimate exactly just from this graph, but if here's April 2019, here's April 2020. So this is looking like maybe January or so, if we think like January, February, March, April. Um, so I'm going to say, um, maybe, maybe we'll, we'll just make a guess that it's January 2020. And then we want to see what does this line up with? Um, so if we have, let's see, so if we consider like taking this peak on the graph and just trying to figure out what that would match up to over here. So here's 600, here's 800. So maybe 700, we're going to have to do a bit of estimating here. So maybe 700 is about here. So I'm thinking we're at like 790-ish, something like that. So again, this is just the best we can estimate from the graph alone. We're going to say that it looks like it was around January of 2020. January of 2020. And it looks like about 700 90, and remember we're in thousands, so about 790,000 homes um, were sold, it looks like. Seven, approximately 790,000. Um, so we actually, I have a table with this information too, so I'm just going to show you that so we can see exactly. So if we go to this table, January has the, the highest number we can see here. It has 774,000, so we were you know, off a little bit in our estimate, but definitely got the right ballpark of the being in the high 700s. Um, so then the next question is looking at the other graph. When did the peak of existing home sales occur? Um, that also looks like it was early 2020. So you know, maybe January, maybe February, depending how, how this is counting. So I'm going to just, I'm going to go ahead and just call it early 2020 again. Um, so this looks like it was early 2020. And again, trying to read this graph as accurately as we can. Um, this time we've got the numbers over on this side, makes it a little bit easier. Um, so if we kind of think about extending this peak over, so we've got 5,600, 5,800. So if we think about, and again, this is in thousands of units. So if maybe in here would be the 5,700. Again, we're almost to that 5,800,000. So we're going to say that it's about maybe 5,790. And again, this is in thousands. So what this would really mean is that about almost five, you know, we're in the high five million. So five million, almost five million eight hundred thousand. Um, so that's just kind of reading the graphs and estimating from them. Um, the next question is going to involve some calculating, and we're going to go back to the table to do that. So what was the absolute change in new home sales from April 2019 to April 2020? So, and here's what absolute change means. It just means we're going to take the ending value first. So in this case, the April 2020 um, minus the starting value. So that's going to be the value in April 2019 we may or may not get a negative number just depending what those two numbers are so it is possible that you would report this as a negative so if we come down here and let's see so we want to compare april 2019 so that's our 664 um april 2020 was 623 so we're going to use those two numbers and these are both in thousands um so we had the ending value of 623 in April 2020 minus the starting value of 664 
um, both of these again in thousands. So if we do this subtraction, we are in fact going to get a negative number this time. So we're going to get negative 41. Um, and again, just remember, so our final answer would be that it went down by 41,000 homes. So 41,000 fewer homes were sold in April 2020 compared to a year before. Then the percent change, so it's going to be based on that absolute change. So we're going to take what we just figured out, this ending value minus starting value, so we already have that piece, um, divided by the starting value. So I'm going to actually take a shortcut. So technically it would be negative 41,000 over um, 664,000, but because they're both in thousands, I'm just going to leave out that piece of it. And I'm just going to do it this way. So negative 41 over negative 664. Again, if we put those zeros in, wouldn't change a thing because they both have them. So essentially, if we divide the top and bottom by a thousand, those would just all cancel out anyway. So we can just take the shortcut and do negative 41 divided by negative 664. And that's going to give us, of course, a negative still. And it's going to be negative 0 0.0. 617. This is the decimal form of the change, um, but we want to change it to a percent. So we're going to multiply that by 100. And that lets us know that this is a negative 6.17. And this was rounded, actually. I should make this an approximate here. Um, percent. And if we were just going to round it to the tenths place, we would say that their change was negative 6.2 percent from April 2019 to April 2020. Um, and I just wanted to go back to the chart that we had been looking at because they actually did this math for us. They reported right down here um, that the chip, the percent change from 2019 to 2020 was in fact negative 6.2 percent. So they didn't do that, show the absolute change here, but the percent change is the same thing that we had just gotten. Um, last question I had on here was just a more of a conceptual question, um, do the new home and existing home sales follow a similar trend? So if we go up to these two line graphs and we're kind of, we're looking at the same span of time here. In fact, why, just to kind of make it, make it even more precise, why don't we just start them both in, let's see, so this is 2016, so we're starting April 2016, so why don't we take a look at it that way? Um, and then, so we figure we're starting somewhere around here. So do we see the same trends if we go from April 2016 to the end? Um, so I should have made my mark up here. So some starting somewhere around here. So what's going on? So they're both kind of, you know, a little up and down, but generally on a rising trend. So for a lot of their time, they're similar. Right in here seems like the biggest difference. So in um, early 2009, like late 2018, early 2019. So like this part, um, we did see a drop in the other one, but it seems like it was a little steeper for the existing home sales. Um, similar thing happened this in the, in the, at the end in April, 2020, we had a much steeper drop here than we saw here. So, um, so they're, they're following similar trends you could say, but definitely some exceptions. Um, so this, again, there's many ways you could answer a question like this. So I'm just going to type in one possible answer you might give. So we could say something like the overall trends are similar, but there are a few places where there are differences. And then you might want to look into, um, well, first specify where those are. So we could say, for example, in, what did we say it was, I think it was, late 2018 to early 2019, there was a little bit of a difference there. Oops. Yeah, late. So the drop was sharper for, so in late, it looks like the existing home sales dropped more sharply. And then the same thing seemed to happen in April, 2020. Um, 
but overall similar. So then you might want to look about look into those more, like what was going on, why were there differences. Um, so that's the main idea. So the calculation wise, I wanted you to see how to do the absolute change and the percent change. Um, and then the rest is just kind of reading and interpreting those graphs. Thanks.